would you feel if you were a prisoner of your own body? My father and many other people have fallen victim to amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, famously nicknamed after the New York first baseman, or New York Yankees first baseman, Lou Gehrig, who died in 1939. ALS is a progressive degeneration of nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord that control your voluntary muscles. The name is derived from the Greek language. <laughs> <laughs> language. Ah means no or negative. Myo refers to muscle. Entropic is nourishment. So no muscle nourishment is what it stands for. Uh, it is a very painful and suffering disease. According to Nicholas Moragas, MD, Associate Professor of Neurology at John Hopkins School of Medicine, he has quoted, Every patient is dying. And it makes it sort of a challenge to treat this patient, sit back and treat them with respect and enthusiasm, but at the same time realize that it's a tough road for these patients. Ha imagine losing all muscle function. Imagine not being able to lift up a finger or give a loved one a hug. Imagine losing all control of your body and knowing that you only have a little bit of time left to live. Imagine just wanting somebody to help you, but not many people can, simply because this disease is not that well known about. And that brings, you to, that brings me to why I am here today to talk to you. I'm going to persuade you on why we should research ALS by first talking about how there is no cure for ALS. Second, I'm going to talk about the cause, which is how it is not well researched. And third, I'm going to bring up the solutions of what we can do to help. I would like to introduce you a major problem with, with this disease. We do not have a cure for ALS. Sure, that there have been some breakthroughs in the research field, such as finding genetic mutations in the protein SOD1, environmental factors, and that it can be inherited. Some of these breakthroughs have been, oh, the groundbreaking discovery of the ALS gene SOD1 was found responsible for 20% of all inherited ALS cases. In 1993, scientists discovered mutations in the gene that produces copper zinc superoxide dimutase, or the SOD1 protein enzyme, that was found associated with um, inherited FALS, familial ALS. According to Sonia Ray and colleagues in an article with a long title, <laughs> um, it's titled, An Inter-Subunit Disulfide Bond Prevents In Vitro Aggregation of a Superoxide Dimutase 1 Mutant Linked in FALS on May 4th of 2004. <laughs> Told you it was long. It's longer than the quotation itself. <laughs> um, Postmortem FALS brains are characterized by SOD1 inclusions in the motor neurons of regions in which neuronal loss is most significant. What that means is that the SOD1 enzyme, which is a protein that has been uh, mutated, was found in the motor neurons in the axon. Uh, you have your cell body and then the axon. Um, if they found mass quantities of this protein in, those, in the FALS brains. So they have found that this is a genetic link. In 2009, this new gene was found responsible for about 5% of all inherited ALS cases. Um, another major breakthrough is the first clinical trial of ISIS SOD1, which was a new drug that was targeted towards the SOD1 enzyme. So it was targeted towards trying to um, prevent the SOD1 enzyme from mutating and further on. That was found at the ALSA.org website. Uh, ALS can affect anyone, but it is not contagious. According to U.S. population studies, 5,600 people are diagnosed each year. That is 15 new cases a day. Now, it may not seem a lot, but that adds up really quick. It is estimated that 30,000 Americans have the disease at any given time. 
According to the ALS, ALS Care database, 60% of the people with ALS in the database are men, and 93% of the patients are Caucasian. Now this shows that the ALS tends to specifically target white Caucasian men, but it does not discriminate against racial, um, your background, or socioeconomic. Half of all the people affected with ALS live at least two or three more years after the diagnosis. So, if this is such a significant disease, why is it that we don't have a cure? A major reason is it is not well researched. We would be much further along with finding a cure for this disease if we had more research. This is hard to accomplish though, considering that not many people know about this disease. Most people have never heard about this disease until it affects someone in their life, whether it be themselves, a family member, or a friend. Um, this lack of awareness makes it even harder for a person to cope with the disease. How would you feel if all of a sudden one day the doctor told you that you were dying from a disease that you had never felt about? I know that I would be devastated. I mean, it's one thing to find out that you have cancer um, that you have breast cancer or lung cancer, but then all of a sudden it hits you that, what, I never heard about this. It comes to the person as a shock. Another cause for there being no cure yet is insufficient funding. Yes, there have been a few wealthy donors, such as Lawrence Barnett. Uh, Lawrence hadn't known about ALS until August of 1978 when his friend had been affected. He had even stated, this was my first counter contact with the disease. I didn't know what ALS was. Barnett has been a major contributor to the ALS Association. He has devoted his life, he has devoted his time, his money, most of his efforts into this association. He's been a great contributor, as, of, as well as a few other people. Along with there being insufficient funds, it is expensive for the family and patient to pay for all the necessities that the patient accumulates during the remainder of their life. Uh, some of these needs include a wheelchair, expensive medicine, in-home nurses, costly testing, hospice, funeral arrangements, and so on. My father accumulated all of this plus more in the last year of his life. So, what can we do for this disease? We can follow in Lawrence's footsteps and donate to the association. Now, as you see here, this is a little graph. Um, it shows each where the money is spent towards. So, I mean, there's different categories that the money that is donated. Any amounts of money, small or large, will help out a great deal. Uh, you can even donate your used and beat up car. <laughs> That's what I'm planning to do with my old car. Mm -hmm. It will help with um, transporting people. It will help with bringing nurses to the house if they need be. So it really does help out. Um, you, uh, we can do a charity walk called Watch to Defeat ALS. All you have to do is go to the alsa.org website and you can find a walk near you. Um, they are held nationwide. There was recently one held in uh, Long Beach. They're all over the place. There was one, the last one that I remember was the one up in Washington that my father and my stepmom and stepsister had gone to. And this is, they're in their little shirts. And um, it's just, you know, a great way to help the charities. And then, uh, also, if you ever know someone who has suffered from ALS, or if you might, and I hope not, suffer from ALS in the future, we do have support centers as well. There is actually, we have a local chapter here in Palm Desert off of Portola. I put the address here for you. And they meet quarterly. Over in Loma Linda Hospital, they hold meetings every third Thursday of every month. And there are some in Riverside. Um, the best way, though, in my opinion, is to just spread the word about ALS. I mean, like I said, how many of you have heard about it before this class? Uh, 
Not many people know about it before it's too late because the onset is so subtle, most doctors will not get to ALS until everything else is ruled out. So it's important that we need to find this research. Any, uh, when we start to get more research in, we can develop more advances. We can hopefully find a cure for ALS, make necessities more available to the patients who do suffer for it, and as the mission statement of the ALS Association, to cure the world of ALS. My father and many other victims have suffered and have met their fate. But I hope that we can find a cure to ALS and defeat it so that the world does not suffer from it anymore. Today I have talked to you why we need to find a cure for ALS by first mentioning how there was no cure, why there was no cure, and what we can do to help it. Thank you.